Hi guys, it's Anima, this time with a top 10 unanswered questions. Life is Strange has been an amazing, unparalleled experience full of intrigue and charming characters which have stolen our hearts to the extent that it's really bloody upsetting if one of them dies. That being said, the endings left a lot to be desired for some, myself included. Of course, it would have been impossible to tie up all the loose ends as each episode brought fresh points of intrigue. By episode 4, there was too much for a small budget game to handle. With that, here are my top 10 unanswered questions. Number 10! The homeless woman. What the fuck is she doing? What happens to her? She says she's been here for 1,000 years. She's surrounded by Max related stuff. Geek Remix has analyzed her a lot, by the way, so go and check them out. You'll have a good time. She tells you all kinds of stuff. She speaks so full of intrigue and emphasizes the Prescott threat, which also amounts to not much, by the way, but we haven't got to that part yet. She says Rachel hung out with some dude that she assumes was her dad. So, not Frank. Some information there which is doubly interesting, since Rachel supposedly met someone special in some way before disappearing. You have the option to save her, so like, hell yeah, cool. Then in episode 5, she's either dead if you done goofed or just missing. Mm, fine. I mean, like, whatever, it's realistic, I guess. She couldn't leave a note or anything like that, but this is a video game. It doesn't have to be realistic. Number 9! This bitch. So, off the bat, she's revealed to have bought some drugs. So is everyone in Blackwell, apparently. But she also happens to be manning the door for the Vortex Club under Jefferson's hire. Jefferson. Big Bird. Froggy McGee. In the alt timeline, she's doing... Some something with Warren? Okay, whatever. They're a couple, apparently. Warren, on the night of the party, is off his tits on one cup of drink. Alcohol is only available to Vortex Club members. Stella, I work for a fucking kidnapper who uses drugs, Hill, happens to be in proximity. I don't know, dude, she's weird. She's weird. Number eight. Kate and Jefferson's relationship. Whatever Jefferson and Kate talk about in episode 2 is enough to push Kate over the edge. This is the final straw for her and her response is to... die? Here's their conversation. Way of getting attention. That's really mean, Mr. Jefferson. You just don't get it. Just leave me alone. You have to talk to me, Kate. Why? It's all over, like me. Knock off this martyr crap. What do you want from me? I want you to be honest. Nobody believes me anyway. Stop acting so brittle. Being on a viral video does that. Maybe this is your way of getting attention. Kate says stuff like, it's over, just like me, and oh, I see, I'm not important now. Jefferson has been rumored to sleep with students, and during episode five, he says maybe he should test Kate's faith again. This means he has put Kate's faith under strain in the past likely having tempted her away from the purity her family so terribly expects from her with his own... Jefferson. Kate's still an 18-year-old girl with hormones. Did they... did they, you know, did they... What is their relationship? Number seven! Sam. Sammy baby, Samuel, oh my god, Samuel. He talked about Max keeping on her path, finding what she's looking for, talking about things being connected by time and tide. Spirit animals. Since we keep seeing the dough, the animal talk is crazy. He changes his tune about Rachel a lot, seems to get prophetic dreams, and all in all, he's stupidly interesting. Max never expresses any fear about him, but for some reason, him and Warren are in the nightmare. I don't really understand that, okay, whatever, okay. He seems connected with the nature of Arcadia Bay, talking about burying the birds, about the whales. Plus, there is the super intriguing question of Sammy's stuff in his shed. I've seen people talk about this meaning he's a crossdresser or something to that effect. Rachel's photos are in the box, along with, like, a proper file of it, so it really does make you wonder. Number six! Ah. Now that we've talked about spiritual Sam, what about the damn Native American connection? I could believe it was all a massive red herring at this point, but there are a lot of those, aren't they? And both Samuel and Miss Grant talk about the bloody Tabanga, with Miss Grant talking extensively about the Native American situation. We have the Tabanga, which Nathan has notably tried to steal, by the way. Oh, and doubly, by the way. Nathan listens to whale songs, and all the whales are, like, dying, so whatever, I guess. There's that graffiti in the two whales? All of the spirit animal talk? 
we have the doe running around, and we have a Native American connection. So what is that, please? <laughs> Number five! David Madsen. David Madsen helps me follow those he follows. What does this mean? Nathan says this and talks about David helping him. Chloe guesses they could have something in cahoots, and David works on Panestate surveillance and... Man, does anything happen when you install the security cameras, apart from Miss Grant guilting you every single opportunity she can because apparently she can't be a grown woman and accept that not everyone wants to sign the fucking petition even if you gave a perfectly sensible excuse like it could have helped Rachel? <gasps> anyway... This note on the principal's computer is so interesting. What does it mean? In episode 5, Nathan is just dead, and David the soldier gets his ass beat by photographer Jefferson. This really interesting point is eradicated. It was canon that we found this, by the way. It wasn't something you could skip. Who does David follow, and what is the Prescott connection here? Number 4! Going back to the conversation Jeff had with Kate, after she runs off to practice some diving, he gets on the phone with someone, and it's a bizarre conversation. Sure, okay. Listen, I do have a class I have to teach. I have to go. Mm hmm Okay, I'll do that. Oh, it, I know. That makes sense. Seriously, I have to hang up now. Let's talk about this later, because I can't have this conversation with you right now, okay? Would you please just hang up the phone? He's very stern in it, but placating, too. He sounds concerned. Whoever is on the other end needs this conversation and Jefferson can't have it right now. Could be something domestic, but who would Jefferson talk to like that? Plus, we know that he's secretly a creeper. It could have been Nathan, except he's in the classroom. Could it be Sean, Nathan's father? Could it be the elusive Twilight Zone David was stalking? We just don't know. Number three! What is the Prescott connection to the storm? In the barn, we see a newspaper clipping of Prescott's having built shelters in the past. Things that could withstand, you know, a tornado or something. Yeah, whatever, the shelter gets dismissed as, ho ho, I got Nathan to build the thing, lol, but let's just ask a few more questions. We've got Nathan's cut audio to consider. We've got countless accounts of the whole world telling you that the Prescott's own this town. To what extent do they? Is there bullying and legacy establishing Arcadia as a place of sin that nature wants to reclaim? Was all of the Prescott stuff just world building? No, 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 there's just too much unanswered for Nathan to get written off like how he does, and this brings me to my next question. Number two! What is Sean Prescott's involvement? <laughs> This character was just scrapped in episode 5, but what about this email? Sean uses words like, I will guide you into this room in a game where there is a fucking place called the dark room, really? You just don't say the word room in that context. You just don't. It's awkward. You could say anything but room and it would make more sense. He says it like there's a legacy attached to it, as though he wanted to welcome Nathan into this secret, terrible line of work they do. Like a destiny, a hard task. In the cut audio, Nathan says, who's gonna take my picture? Lending a huge significance to taking pictures beyond, um, I don't know, art maybe. How could you not notice all the money go towards a bunker when your family has a history of bunker making? Oh, whatever, Nathan's just making another bunker, all right, cool. What happened, Sean? What happened to you? Number one. What was the origin of Max's powers? It's stupidly convenient that she dreams of the storm after falling asleep in Jefferson's class. Here's a paradox. If time was never to be messed with, it causes a storm because chaos wank or whatever. Why does Chloe's death trigger her powers in the first place? What was the point of her getting these powers if she was only going to be punished for using them? Nothing even tells her she's going to get punished. She gets a vision of the storm, then she gets rewind powers. If you got a vision of a storm and then got powers, the logic is that you would try to use these powers to stop the storm. Unless you're like a fuckboy or whatever, but nonsensically it's just, Okay, you got the powers! Oh wait, you want to use them? Sorry, yeah, it's like in the fine print, you can't. It like destroys everything. <laughs> Sorry. What actually caused Max's abilities? It's strongly suggested that the original plan was to have another time traveler, like maybe an opposing one. But Don't Nod didn't have the resources to realize their vision. This is the biggest question, in my opinion. What truly caused them? Was it just to say, too bad, life's not fair, you're just gonna get powers to be powerless? Is that really the vision? Is that really the concept here? <sighs> 
Anyway, folks, those are my top 10 unanswered questions. Got any more questions you feel are unanswered? Feel free to put them in the comments. Want to answer the questions? Go for it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm happy that these videos are cathartic for some of you. Subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the latest content from yours truly. Check out the other stuff lurking about on my channel for a good laugh. But most importantly, take care of yourselves and I will see you soon, my friends. Bye bye! Let me tell you right now, comparison is the enemy of love. And I know I sound super cheesy when I say that, like I'm Sailor Moon or something. Fighting evil, fighting it's taken my baby! Oh, there's the beaut- What a beautiful baby! Oh! <laughs> we made it worse! Okay, let's make it- Oh, God! That's <laughs> oh, fucking irredeemable! Hey, man. <laughs> you smell good. <laughs>